All right, our second speaker is Dominic Nguyen. He's the design lead and co-founder of Percolate Studio. Percolate is a San Francisco software design and engineering agency. They're, they're the ones behind the Atmosphere JS catalog of Meteor packages, and they also brought us um, the official Meteor example apps to do and local market. Dom will be presenting on how to design for real time. Hey everyone, thanks for being here. Uh, today I'm here to talk to you about designing for real time. So, you finally wrapped your head around this real time JavaScript thing. Your apps are snappy and quick to build. But now your app is in production. There are thousands of folks banging on your code and data is flooding in. Your reactive interfaces are updating so fast Folks can't tell what's happening. Layouts are breaking, and it's impossible to track down what's causing UI changes. You thought you knew how to use tools like Meteor and React and Node, but you don't. Simply knowing the technology isn't enough. You need to design for real time. In this talk, we'll look at common design challenges and present a set of principles that serve as the basis of Percolate Studio's approach to real time. My name is Dominic Nguyen. I'm a designer and co-founder at Percolate Studio. I design, write, and research ways to deliver more compelling user experiences. You might be familiar with my work if you use Atmosphere.js, Meteor's example apps, or have heard of Yumly. Percolate Studio is a digital studio in San Francisco and Melbourne that brings real-time products to market for our clients. Businesses from the smallest startups to the largest Fortune 500 companies trust our interdisciplinary team with their product design and engineering goals. So why does designing for real time even matter? The reigning web paradigm since the genesis of the browser has been requ request response. Someone who views a web page sends a request to the content server. The server receives the request and responds with the page. This constraint results in linear experiences punctuated by page refreshes. While it's perfect for the internet's original intent of viewing static documents, we've come a long way since then. Our technology and capabilities have evolved. In 2015, we want the web to do more, to tell us what to eat, to guide us to our next destination, even to adjust our, th our thermostats. We expect apps to react to changes in the system, Prior to real time, the provenance of actions was clear. They could be attributed to a single user and confirmed with a page refresh. Now, add several users to the system who act on the same data and whose interface is updated reactively. Imagine the difficulty in communicating system logic to the end user. When interface changes in front of someone despite their inaction, there's opportunity for distrust to take hold. In the real-time world, our challenges are not only to build delightful features, but to translate complexity and illuminate causation. Translation is to express the sense of words in another language. It is expressing the complexity within our apps in a way that is natural and easy to understand. In practice, it's just reassuring users that we've registered their actions and something is happening. Causation is a relationship between cause and effect. Our goal is to eliminate relationships and data, which just means to show how two data points can lead to a new insight. Creators can harness the power of real time to deliver next generation web experiences. However, creating great apps is not just a factor of having power, but using it well. Three principles guide how we approach real time. Be state aware, expect change, and preserve context. Be state aware. The user should know the state of the system at all times. Our world is irrational. We build frameworks like governments and machines and apps to provide structure to an otherwise unpredictable system. Our goal when creating real-time apps is to communicate that our digital world is in fact rational. So let's see some concrete examples. 
Connection status. Connection dropouts are a frequent occurrence. Let's take a look at different ways to handle this. On the left, most apps don't actually notify you if the connection is spotty. Users submitted actions without active connection are liable to be lost. Be state aware by communicating the factors outside of the app's control that could lead to unexpected results. Loading. Users often wait on content due to low bandwidth or weighty assets. Be proactive by indicating the system is processing their, ac their actions and loading new information. Confirmation. Show that your app has empathy for user goals. Many apps suffer from under-communication of state. For instance, when a user makes a change, say, deleting an item, they'd like to know if it was successful. Show that your app is listening and cares about the user by responding to their actions. The second principle is expect change. The product should communicate what will happen when a user acts. Surprises in a logical system are terrifying. Consider the, the mechanical precision of an automobile. Surprises in that system are flat tires and engine smoke. Like a car, an app translates immense machine effort in a user-friendly manner. Unlike the car, the digital medium allows us to anticipate and inform users of change. Communicating results is one way to set expectations. When drastic state changes are possible, foreshadow the result of actions. A common mistake in the design of real-time systems is to render interfaces without notifying the user. This leads to experiences that are unpredictable. Giving users opportunities to process what will happen prevents surprises. Skeleton templates make the app feel more responsive by foreshadowing layout. In many cases, real-time apps defer rendering layout to all relevant data has arrived. You've probably experienced this yourself. However, since the templates of isomorphic apps are already on the client, we can show a skeleton layout that foreshadows new screens and sets the expectation that data will fill the empty spaces. The last principle is preserve context. The user should know where content comes from and where it belongs. Since we can't possibly see or even consume what's happening at all times in real-time apps, it's important that we establish and reinforce the sense of space, where elements live in relation to each other. Doing so means that we create landmarks that the user can rely on to get their bearings. Consistent placement. New content should appear in predictable locations. Let's take a look. Reactive apps can determine where items should be placed through diffing. However, this isn't always intuitive. If you'll notice, new items appeared in, on the left-hand side. Get users accustomed to navigating to key points in your app to find what they're looking for. New items in the latter example appear only at the top. Maintain bearings. Sometimes content just can't appear in a predictable location. A classic example is adding items to a list sorted by item title reactively. The items just appear out of nowhere. You can preserve context by articulating state changes that do not appear in predictable locations. Animation, in this case, can be used to great effect to communicate where content is loading, and slowing an, an, an interaction can sometimes result in greater clarity of the experience. Finally, saving scroll position. When moving back and forth between distinct screens, we often forget to preserve context by saving a user's position, where they were. Ensuring that a user can return to the same scroll position preserves the continuity of the experience and saves time. Users should be accomplishing their goals not trying to trace where they came from. Finally, principles are foundations to build upon. 
And these principles serve as a starting point, when, serve as our starting point when crafting, crafting real-time experiences. And I encourage all creators to discover what actually works for them. Uh, but for a head start, try being state aware, expecting change, and preserving context. Many of these ideas apply beyond real-time systems. You've probably seen them elsewhere. However, sometimes the latest technology makes us forget that we're creating software for people. That's Thank you. And say hello to me on Twitter. Uh, and feel free to follow up with me uh, after the talk in per if you want uh, app-specific questions answered. Do we have any questions for Dom? Max? Yes. Um, when it comes to mobile interfaces, do you prefer web or native? <laughs> when it comes to mobile interfaces, do I prefer web or native? The user experience gap is still, still exists between web and native. If I, my business is predicated on, a, on competing on user experience or design, I would say native. If my business was uh, about trying to deliver the, an experience to the most amount of people, then the question is kind of muddied a bit, and it would probably lean towards web. Yep. So we have this package at Percolate Studio. It's called Percolate Momentum. That gentleman over there uh, wrote, wrote the package. And what it does is it helps us, uh, so for instance, skeleton templates. It helps us animate items into, into view in a way that, that feels right and allows us to control the animation via JavaScript. Um, percolate momentum, and I'm sure there's other other packages around. Just check on atmosphere. Yeah. I think Sam had a question. I, I forgot. Oh, okay. <laughs> Any other questions for Don? All right. Well, thank you so much. <laughs>